What's up YouTube world? It's your girl here back at it again with another video. If you're new to my channel, hi, welcome, my name is Garvey, and typically on this channel I talk about all things health, hair, fitness, and lifestyle, but today I'm going to be talking about a topic a little bit different. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my experience living with endometriosis, and not only that, I'm going to be talking about my thoughts on oral contraceptives as a treatment for endometriosis now that I've been taking them for about a year. Hey, what's up you guys? It's Future Garby here. So I decided it would be best if this video was broken up into two parts just because the video was getting way too long. So the part you're watching right now will be kind of how I came to the conclusion that I had endometriosis. I'll be talking a lot about my backstory and hopefully some of that resonates with you. I'll also be discussing kind of why I was grappling with the idea of taking birth control for such a long time. I think it was almost two years that I was going back and forth, you know, whether I should take it or whether I shouldn't. So I'll be talking about that and also some of the alternative methods to birth control that I tried before ultimately making that decision to take birth control. Now my plan is to have part two out fairly shortly, so when it is out, I'll go ahead and link it down in the description and link it in the video so you can watch that one. In part two, I'll be explaining the birth control pills that I've tried so far and how my body reacted to them, my experiences with the side effects, and kind of all of that stuff if you're curious about that. In this video, you'll hear me refer to Reproductive Disease Awareness Week and there's like Christmas decorations in the back. And that's because I have to apologize, I've been sitting on this video for a very long time. The past few months have not been very kind to me, so, um, but one of my goals for the new year is to start monetizing off of YouTube and creating more content. And to do so, I need a minimum of a thousand subscribers, so, if you've made it this far in the video, please do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel and give me a big thumbs up. It's free to you and it helps me know what kind of content you guys want to see and it makes me encouraged to keep making more videos. So thank you so much in advance and without further ado, let's get back to the video. Now, my experience with endometriosis is not something that I typically share publicly. I think that I made one post during Endometriosis Awareness Month and I was really taken aback by the overwhelming amount of support and love for my friends and followers and also the curiosity and people that were really proud of me for sharing my experiences and my stories. I'm filming this video on the tail end of Reproductive Disease Awareness Week in the hopes that my experiences with endometriosis thus far will help somebody in their journey with endometriosis. I know that when birth control was presented to me as a treatment method for endometriosis, I was looking all over for videos about people sharing their experiences with birth control for endometriosis, and I couldn't find a lot, so even though this is something that I don't typically share with people, it's a little bit weird for me to talk about still, I'm really hoping that this video will be helpful for somebody um, yeah, I don't hope you're making sharing all of this worth it. This video is really for anyone who thinks they have endo, who knows they have endo, or are interested in starting birth control as a treatment method for endometriosis. Maybe you have loved ones with endo and you're curious and you want to learn more. Really, this video is for anyone with a period and maybe anyone who's curious, but with that being said, during this video, I'm going to be talking about my experience with endometriosis so far and kind of how I figured out that I might have endometriosis. And in that, I'll be talking about my period and kind of like my sex life and stuff like that. So this is a trigger warning if you just like happen to stumble into my video. Um, yeah, I'm going to be talking about my period, so maybe if you're not comfortable with that, tune into one of my other videos. I'd love to see you there. <laughs> so I wanted to start off simply by defining what endometriosis is. And endometriosis is when the endometrial tissue, or the tissue that lines the uterus, grows or makes its way outside of the uterus where it's supposed to be. Now when this happens, the most common symptoms for people with endometriosis are painful periods or dysmenorrhea, 
um, infertility, pain with sex, things like that. There really are a laundry list of symptoms that present in people with endometriosis and they kind of vary from person to person. It's now estimated that around 11% of women worldwide are affected by endometriosis, so that adds up to be about 1 in 10 women that are affected by endometriosis. Endo is most common in women around their 30s and 40s, but symptoms of endometriosis can start as young as reproductive age. Now, even though endometriosis is somewhat common, it takes on average about 8 years for someone with symptoms of endometriosis to be given a proper diagnosis. Now, there are a lot of factors that contribute to this eight-year span that it takes to be properly diagnosed, and in my case, it took a lot of taking my healthcare into my own hands. Now, I won't speak to this topic in particular because I feel like maybe that's a subject for another video, but yes, on average, it takes women about eight years to get diagnosed with endometriosis. Endometriosis is not something that will just be cured on its own. Um, common treatment methods for endometriosis are NSAIDs, hormone therapy, which um, oral contraceptives or birth control is considered hormone therapy, and also things like hysterectomy. There are a couple of other things too, but those are the main treatments. Now, even though endometriosis is somewhat common, it's not a very highly researched subject. There still isn't really a known cause, some people hypothesize that it's hereditary, stress-induced, um, autoimmune, but there's not really a clear understanding about how people get endometriosis. So now I'm going to be transitioning into how I figured out that something was wrong with me or really how I came to the conclusion that I had endometriosis. So if you don't want to hear about periods and sex and throw up, then now is your opportunity to go check out one of my other videos or take a pause here and hit that subscribe button. <laughs> okay, get comfy ladies because I am about to be sharing some uncomfortable details about my personal life and I'm kind of nervous. Okay. Okay, so when I was in high school, um, probably around sophomore in high school, so I must have been around 15, um, I run track, I've always run track my whole life, and I started to notice more and more that after we would do our two warm-up laps, I would immediately feel sick and have to go throw up. Now, after I threw up, I was fine, um, so I just thought that like, wow, am I really that out of shape where I do two warm-up laps and then I immediately feel sick after. It was just weird and my coaches started to notice too. My coach would joke with me and ask if I was pregnant and like laugh about it and I thought it was odd and it would just happen sometimes but not all the time but eventually it just became normal and I kind of dismissed it and didn't give it a second thought again. I guess that was just like what happens. I run my two warm-up laps and I get sick. Fast forward to later in high school, around senior year of high school, I don't really remember how old I would have been senior year, but um, when I started to become sexually active, um, it felt really uncomfortable. And this was like my first experience with sex. So again, it was like one of those things I didn't really think twice about it. I just thought that like, oh, I'm new to this, it feels uncomfortable, but like that'll go away eventually. But it didn't. Yeah, as time went on, I think I did end up going to the OBGYN while I was still in high school and express some of my concerns in terms of having painful sex. And she kind of said the same thing to me, like, oh, make sure you're comfortable with the person you're having sex with and like it'll go away as you gain more experience and like um you know stuff like that at this point i was kind of going along with what the OBGYN was saying in the meantime though i was experiencing more and more painful cramps like my cramps were pretty bad but you know you you read about like pms all the time like I thought, okay, everyone gets PMS, no big deal, this is just one of those things about being a girl, I have cramps, just like anybody else has cramps. 
But now, fast forward to my freshman year of college, I remember pretty vividly after move-in day, it was like the first day of classes or I also ran track in college. It might have been like the first day of track practice and I got up nice and early and I was excited and immediately I started having cramps and they were so debilitating and I remember talking to my roommate, like my freshman roommate, she was a random, I just met her and I was like, oh I have really bad cramps um, and you know like I lived with a bunch of girls and they're like, yeah I get cramps too and I was like, no but like I think mine are really bad, like they're pretty bad. So at this point, I was starting to kind of realize that I was experiencing pain in correlation with my menstrual cycle. And I was also experiencing extreme PMS in comparison to what all the other girls in my dorm were experiencing. Um, at this point, I was looking up ways to get rid of PMS. So, you know, it says exercise, Advil, ibuprofen, yoga, tea, um, heating pads, things like that, and they would help sometimes, but not on a regular basis. And at this point, it was getting painful to the point where like sometimes I couldn't get out of bed or, you know, it was getting hard to go to class. I think at this point, I had learned about endometriosis just based on my research about PMS and stuff like that, but I thought, there's no way I could have endometriosis because this is most common in women ages 30 to 40 and I realized that I didn't have some of those other symptoms like a common thing with endometriosis is people experience pain like all the time like it's not focused specifically on your time of the month and my pain tends to be focused on my time of the month like I know my period is coming because I start getting this pain um, heavy bleeding is a common symptom, I didn't have that, um, lower back pain, things like that. Like I just didn't have all the symptoms so I didn't connect the dots right away. Between my freshman and sophomore year of college though, things were getting progressively worse. I couldn't stay awake, I was really fatigued. The throwing up the track practice became like an ordinary thing, like that's how I knew my period was coming because I would throw up at track practice. Also during this time, me being in college, I've met some of my lifelong friends and with that came kind of this like vulnerability and transparency talking about sex and I remember explicitly sharing that like sex hurts and like it doesn't feel like people talk about in songs and I kind of like was discussing this with some of my college friends and I came to the realization that my experience was not the experience that my peers were having and kind of just all of these factors led me to figure out that something was not right. Between I want to say my sophomore year and my junior year of college, um, I just went to a lot of different OBGYNs and was told a number of different things about what could be going on. I had the first OBGYN suggest that I just have PMS, everybody gets cramps, have cramps just like anybody else, and she suggested I take ibuprofen every day for the rest of my life and see if that helps. Now, I studied kinesiology in college and I know that NSAIDs are not good on your liver and kidney, so for her to suggest that I just take ibuprofen and it was gonna... <laughs> I had another OBGYN suggest that I had penetration anxiety and I needed to work on like sex therapy and maybe my partners were too big and at this point, I had really developed, I think, kind of like a sex anxiety. Like, I did not have the same college experience as a lot of people. Like, I was just not having sex because I was terrified. It was painful. And I just figured that sex was not for me. I had exams to see if I had a tilted pelvis or my anatomy was correct and stuff like that and everything came back positive so 
At this point, I was kind of just being told a number of different things and I decided to really hone in on research and try to get to the bottom of what was wrong with me. In my research, I came to the conclusion that I must have endometriosis. Once I was confident that I had endometriosis, I now had a different approach to going to the doctor. I went to the OBGYN and I was like, hey, I have endometriosis, I need you to confirm this so I can begin treatment for endometriosis. Once I was able to finally find a provider that was able to get on board with the idea that, hey, I might not be over exaggerating things and I might actually have endometriosis, I was kind of presented with an ultimatum of sorts that, um, take birth control or just live in pain and those were seemingly my only two options so i went home and i told my mom that like the doctor is suggesting that i start birth control and my mom was like make sure you really do your research there are a lot of negative side effects of birth control so really make sure that you are going into this with an informed decision, you know, talk to people you know who have taken birth control. Um, I guess I've had some family members that have had negative experiences with birth control. So my mom was really hesitant um, when I mentioned birth control and it was hard because from the doctor, it was kind of like, this is what you're gonna do, this is your only option, um, or you live in pain. And now it was like, oh, well maybe it's not as safe and straightforward as the doctor was presenting it to be. So it must have been around my junior year that I was presented with this ultimatum to take birth control or to live in pain. And I didn't start taking birth control until about a year now. So I was pondering this decision for about a year and a half and Here's why. So I have a family history of breast cancer and this is something that I think about on a daily basis and something that I was taking into consideration when trying to figure out whether birth control was the correct method of treatment for my endometriosis. So I'm going to be reading this next portion from my phone just so I can make sure that all of the information that I'm providing is accurate. So this particular study shows that women who ever used oral contraceptives had a 7% increase in the relative risk of breast cancer compared with women who had never used oral contraceptives. Women who were currently using oral contraceptives had a 20% increased risk, but that did not increase with the duration of use. So something I remember reading while I was pondering whether or not to start birth control is that you have an increased risk of developing breast cancer while you're taking birth control that stays until um, whatever that duration afterwards. So let me see if I can explain this better. If you're taking birth control for two years, you have that elevated risk of developing breast cancer for two years after you stop taking birth control. Now, there is a ton of information out there about certain factors that increase or decrease risk of developing breast cancer or other kinds of cancer with birth control. Um, one thing I read was triphasic pills versus monophasic. There seems to be an increased risk of developing cancer with these triphasic pills, which are supposed to mimic um, your body's natural hormones, and monophasic has um, the same amount of hormone during the entire pack. Something else I found in my research, though, is that oral contraceptive pills are effective in preventing against other types of cancer like ovarian cancer. This article says that the risk is reduced by as much as 30 to 50 percent among women taking birth control pills for at least three years. So while I was doing all of this research, I kind of just came to the conclusion that I wasn't going to take birth control. With a family history of breast cancer, I was not going to do anything that would heighten my risk of developing breast cancer by any means. But shortly after making this decision, my symptoms of endometriosis became 
more and more debilitating to say the least. I mean, it was really, really bad. Um, pretty much the day before my period and the day after, I would be in so much pain that I was brought to tears and um, I just couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't work out, and if I did accidentally work out, I was doubled over in pain. Um, it was embarrassing. I would be, you know, running laps at the local track and realize one lap in, um, you know, like, uh oh, and I would be laid out on the ground. And there were times where, you know, nobody would help me or see if I was okay. Um, it was just really embarrassing. Like, I didn't go out a lot, I was in pain, I was tired, I was struggling um, with acne because of like the imbalance in hormones. I would get really bloated and just feel like I didn't look cute in my clothes that, you know, like for the other three weeks out of the month looked perfectly fine. It was just really challenging and like knowing that this was something that was gonna happen over and over and over again, I would dread my menstrual cycle. Um, it was just, it was a really, really rough period of my life. I would try things like adjusting my diet. Like I already eat a vegan diet um, and you know, they say cut out things like sugar and dairy. Um, they say exercise and I was already doing all of these things. So it was so challenging that I was just in more and more pain as time went on. When it was like extremely unbearable, I would end up taking like Advil or ibuprofen just to kind of like get me through class. But it did eventually get to the point where like I had to have a conversation with my track coach like, hey, I am in excruciating pain and this is gonna happen every month and I'm not going to be able to go to practice for like two to three days out of the week sometimes and this was just so unfortunate and it was getting really really close to like a breaking point for me. I tried this natural supplement called Vitex and I think it's Chastity Berry, um, something like that and it made my periods kind of heavy which I also didn't like because I wasn't having heavy periods. I was having like extremely regular, just very painful periods. So I decided to stop taking Vitex because I thought that that wasn't the best solution for me either. So fast forward to last year, which was 2020, and I ended up getting a job out of state and, you know, I graduated from college and I moved on my own and, you know, I was in this new place. I don't know anybody. I truly I'm like kind of starting all over and I'm on my own. And when I would have these episodes and bouts of pain, it became increasingly scary because you know, like now I'm on my own. What if I can't get up and call for help? Or like, what if something happens and I'm on my own? And also like now I have this adult job and these responsibilities that need to get done regardless of if I'm in pain or not. So it was kind of like a combination of these factors that ultimately led me to kind of reconsider the option of taking birth control as a treatment for endometriosis. And I was absolutely terrified. 